EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Coming up, another edition of the NFL International Series, and it should be a good one between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Cleveland Browns. The return man, Wilson. And able to get this out to the 25. Well, the Bengals making their way out. And we mentioned it before, but it bears repeating. 29 seasons in Cincinnati without a playoff win. The longest current streak in the NFL. Now, it's year two of Zach Taylor at the helm, Charles. Year one, of course, of Joe Burrow. So how close do you think they are to ending that ugly streak? Not as close as they would like to be, but there's definitely a reason for optimism. You already mentioned it. Joe Burrow. The number one pick in the draft, a new face of the franchise, and a guy who can create plays when everything breaks down around him. Remember, they were 26 on offense last year, 29th on defense, so they've got a ways to go just to get into contention. I do think, though, if they have a chance to win six games this year, I think that would show nice improvement and really set themselves up for the future. Yeah, that would be a four-win bump if they could get to just six from their 2-14 and 14 campaign in 2019. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. The D-tackle, Sheldon Richardson, came barreling in for the sack. And that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football led to a sack. That's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. So that'll leave Burrow and the Bengals with a third and long after that sack we just saw. On the screen, Bernard. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Tyler Boyd, the intended receiver, but it's going to be second down. Well, that's a defense coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. Second and ten. Now Burrow. Got an open man. That's C.J. Uzama. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? On third down, Burrow. And that is incomplete. Not the opening possession they were looking for, especially on the road. No doubt about it, because they wanted to come out and establish a little momentum right away. But now bringing up a fourth down, an empty possession, not what they were seeking. So on fourth down, on comes the left-footed punter, Kevin Huber, to punt it away. JoJo Natson back deep. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. The Browns making their way out. And you know, so much to talk about with this Cleveland franchise since we last saw them. 6-10 and ten a year ago, but they have once again got a new head coach. Kevin Stefanski comes over from Minnesota, and he'll try to get this club back to the playoffs. Charles, that's somewhere that they have not been for 17 years, the longest streak in the NFL. And let's just call it as it was, partner, last year, this team got caught up in the hype. Too many people were talking Super Bowl, and they hadn't even made the playoffs. But their quarterback, Baker Mayfield, I think he said it best. They did a lousy job of managing expectations last year. And as he put it, we got out of control. So this is a team, I think, that has a good roster. Brand new head coach and Stefanski, as you mentioned. And I think that they've been very quiet this offseason which I believe bodes well for this team in 2020. Well, they are loaded with playmakers on offense. In addition to Baker, you got Beckham, Landry Chubb, Kareem Hunt, Austin Hooper, a long list. The only issue, though, on the defensive side of the ball, they did lose their second-round safety, Grant Delpit from LSU, to a torn Achilles, and they expected him to start right away. <laughs> Throwing on second and long. Mayfield got a man. That's Rashard Higgins. 
The reception good for seven. It's third down. Rashard Higgins. It's a gain of seven. Makes it third and ten. And a nickel look here for the Bengals as they try to defend this on third. Mayfield looks to throw. They'll go screen here to Hunt. And they will rally and stop him short of the first down. They get him to the ground at the 26. Their opening drive here is going to result in a punt. They got seven yards there, but not enough. There's an example of good situational football being played by a defense. They understood where the third down play was, the down and distance, and made sure that they didn't get anywhere near that, bringing up fourth down. Yeah, they were sniffing out that marker, didn't want to let him get close to there, and now a likely three and out to start. Yeah, I love the way they rallied to the football and got to him and made sure they didn't give up much run after catch. A very nice punt that time, but they get 11 back on the return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. going to lead up the Bengals here first and 10 at their own 43. And he'll drop here to throw. And the catch made, it's Tyler Boyd. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Out of bounds at his own 48-yard line. A gain of five brings up second and five. Second down and five. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. Green brings it in. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets him a three and out. Two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together. Just what you described. Get them the ball, give them a little momentum, and they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. On first and 10, Joe Burrow. That's complete to John Ross. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. That one good for 15, and the Bengals get a first down. That's a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. Now Burrow on first down, and nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. Kevin Johnson, former first-round pick there defensively. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. To the air again, Burrow, and that's going to be incomplete. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Again, it's Burrow. He's got green. Yeah, this defense rallies, and they stop him short of the first down right near the 24. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of the first down. And down inside the 15 he goes. A gutsy call. Turns out to be a good one, though. First down on a pickup of 11. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Now a first carry for Giovanni Bernard. Showed off the toughness, but still corralled shy of the five at the six. Solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. 
but a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And it's caught. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. That's good. Third catch for him on this drive alone, and it'll give him a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. First and goal at the one. Mixon try to punch it in. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. Nothing on that one. It'll be second down. No gain they're right there at the one. No gain, but don't let that stop you. Line back up and keep going at them. If I'm them, I'm thinking about going at it four straight times. On second and goal, one man stands in the backfield, and that's Mixon. Now it's Burrow. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Here's a run with Mixon. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft, and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Burrow going for it on fourth. And my goodness, this is incomplete. They're turned away on fourth and goal. And the Browns are able to come up with a goal line stand. They're coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. First carry now for Nick Chubb. Showed off the power, but not much room to run. Brought down at the five. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. And give him a lot of credit there, but even more credit to the guys up front. In that situation, you know it's going to be a stacked defensive front. And to be able to gain that much yardage, that's a big win for the guys on offense. Yeah, they were just about standing on their own goal line, so to get a few yards there, a great start. Now we'll see what second down breaks. And they'll bring him down right around the 13. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down, otherwise it's going to be a long afternoon. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And he'll get this one up to about his 14. Defensively, Sam Hubbard, the former Buckeye, there to stop him. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. They'll try to throw here. Mayfield, and he's got the hook up to Landry. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. A gain of 13. It's a first down. How about a guy proving his worth in different ways? Had the big play in the run game to play before. This time, they go right back to him in the passing game. And he comes through with yet another big play. That's why you work out so hard in the offseason, so you can stay on the field and accumulate big plays. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. Down at the 30-yard line. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Back to the ground. This time it's Chubb. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. Brings up third and six. No score after one on EA Sports. No score.
Couple of extra defensive bats in the ball game here on third and six. On third down, Mayfield. And a good job on the tackle there as they get him down shy of the first on the 35-yard strike. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Now a hit and a loose football. And this is picked up by the Browns. Now it appears we're going to get whistles and a stop. A man down on the return. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. And this is one of those bang-bang plays, Charles. Did the knee hit first or did the ball come out first? This is where you need that 20-20 eyesight, don't you, Brandon? You've got to see which one happened first. If the knee hit the ground, then they will keep possession. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're a back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. On second down, here's Mixon. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. Some of these play calls, I think they're a little conservative. But you know me, because it's easy to sit up in this booth, right, and make all the calls and, and think I'm going to be correct. But I would like to see them open things up, because otherwise this defense is going to gang up on the run and set them down. He's got his man, Boyd. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Burrow to Boyd there for the Cincy first. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. And he picks up about six as he gets this down to the 41. And there's the first tackle of the game for Carl Joseph. He's one of those safeties that you can utilize in any way you want. But I will have to say, I think the number one thing he does best is tackle. The last run got six, now second and four. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. He gets this one to Boyd. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Brings up third and one. The Bengals on third down. Two for five to this point. They're up against a third and one situation. Now it's Burrow. That's caught by his tight end, Uzama. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. And they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. The tight end, C.J. Uzama, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. And that throw behind his man, he missed him, incomplete. Ball on the 30 as they come up, second and 10. Throwing again, it's Burrow. Open man is Uzama. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. So two of two on third down conversions on this drive, and now they face a third and three here. 
Quick hitter here, it's complete. And they'll get this down to the 10. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. First down. And you don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. From the 10, first and goal. And Burrow going to throw again. That's complete right around the eight. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. That catch good for only a couple. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Second and eight. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And he bowls his way into the end zone for a Bengal touchdown. An eight-yard touchdown run as his guys are first out of the scoreboard here this afternoon. In as many coaches' meetings as we sit in, we hear the word finish all the time, don't we? And on that play, the back actually finished getting into the end zone, breaking the last tackle. Tried to wrap up, tried to use the proper technique, just wasn't able to get it done. Good. Extra point through the snowflakes, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. JoJo Nansen now on the return. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. It hasn't gone particularly well for them. That's obvious. In these conditions, no points so far. They've got to get that offense on track. The question, how do they do it? It is the age-old question, isn't it? And to me... Finding a way to make sure your playmakers touch the ball without it being too exotic. Meaning you don't have to go deep down the field. Maybe you hit them on those short passes on the perimeter. Make sure you just turn around and hand it to your best runner and get out of the way. Don't cause any extra stress on your offense. At the 23-yard line. At the 23, it's second and 12. Mayfield now, and it's hauled in by Austin Hooper, and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 19 yards to pick up there, move the chains. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it, understands the catch radius, understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball, and puts it right out there for the nice pickup. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb, and not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. Carlos, you know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stuffed the run. On second and nine. Mayfield over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 39. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. 39-yard line. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. And off comes to Chubb. And a pretty good run there as he gets seven down to the 33. With the give to but no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. At the 33-yard line. Three yards remain for second down. Set the 
Running with Hunt here out of the shotgun. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football. In that situation, that's almost a tendency breaker. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. A give. This is Chubb. A gain of three, second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. A give running right is Chubb. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. <laughs> Following the penalty, Chubb. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Mayfield from the gun on third down. He'll leave it for Hunt, complete. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. They'll get 10 there, but it leaves him just short for fourth down. It would be a very makeable field goal try from here, but instead they're going to go for it. So on fourth down, out comes the Browns kicker, Austin Seibert. From the left hash, this from 37. Seibert able to knock this one through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So they do get three points, but that's now three drives with only the three points. Not a ratio that's going to win you many ball games. Not at all, Brandon. And think about it this way. We all know payoff is the key, right? And what we love to have the concession on every T-shirt that's been printed in football that says finish on it, because that's the mantra everywhere. Got to be able to finish drives, put points on the board. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Now it's Wilson. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points... It's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. They will throw on first down with Burrow. Open man is Ross complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yard. And he's taken down. This will be a brown sack. With a man with a big new contract, Miles Garrett, in there to take him down. I'll tell you what, he did not have much time there to skip in the field before he was ducking and covering. Did it appear to you, as it did to me, that the defensive front won their play really quickly? Yeah. Meaning the guys in front of them had almost no chance to block them. They were on him in a hurry. 
And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Burrow on the screen, Bernard. And he gets it just shy of midfield, but that's not enough. He's short of the marker. They'll get 11, but still a little short. Fourth down. A gain of Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. What you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. One yards on the punt there. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. Likely time for just one final play, and then it'll be off to the locker room to talk about how they can erase this deficit. Yeah, and I think a lot of people look at it and go, well, maybe you take a shot here. Maybe you get some momentum going into the half. What's the flip side of that? You do something crazy, quarterback gets hit, ball comes free, and now you're down an even bigger margin. Go ahead and take this one, go to the locker room, start over. That's a good chunk of yardage It's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books, but now they have to make that up again, don't they? And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. Final play of the half, Mayfield. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. So we reach intermission here in a low-scoring game. 7-3 is our score. As it's time now to send you back stateside to Orlando, Florida, and check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. And he returns this to the 22. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. And with the way this offense has played thus far, to be frank, they got to feel pretty grateful to be in the ball game. I would agree with you totally because they've done all of nothing offensively in this game, yet they still find themselves in a position on this drive where a touchdown can give them the lead. They need to take advantage of it. And they're still looking for that first touchdown here in the third quarter. All they have so far, the field goal. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. That one definitely helps as they try to push the ball down the field here, trailing early in the third quarter. And even though they're trailing, not abandoning the running game. People may call it an adjustment. I think it's just much more sticking to what works for you and continuing to have faith in it, and the running game is starting to pay off. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. Back-to-back no, no. -back good plays have him on the move on first down. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. They're looking for Higgins, but it is intercepted. Picked off by Torrey McTire. And he will score. Touchdown, Cincinnati. We constantly talk about defenders having great vision and being able to see plays unfold and make their own plays. But you also have to have good feel as well because you can't see everything out there. See the play unfold, feel what's going on, and then get to the right spot and make your own play. And in this case, it turned out to be a highlight one. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. Makes the score. Bengals 14, Browns 3.
Well, they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This is JoJo Natson. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's their turn now to go out and try and get some points. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Jarvis Landry, Pro Bowl wideout, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. Here's second and ten. From the gun, Mayfield, and that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They forced incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Mayfield to throw it. This one complete into the hands of Higgins. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Just what the Browns needed there. Good for a gain of 17. 45-yard line. First down, Mayfield. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 12 more yards there and another first down. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. A run for Nick Chubb, and he takes it down to the 40 with a pickup of four. The ball carrier. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to that will feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Play fake, Mayfield. It's caught by OBJ. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 21. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Oh, that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left, ran the deep in route over the middle, and the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. Quickly into the hands of Beckham. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Now they return to the ground game. Chubb, and he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Give him two yards. That sets him up first and goal. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork, and they add a little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. That's a gain of seven, and we'll leave them with second and goal coming up. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Second down and three. They'll try to run with Hunt. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. They get three yards closer, but still work to do. It's third and goal. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. 
They'll give it to Chubb, and he'll barrel his way into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Nick Chubb taking it in, and the Browns have cut it back within a score. But he decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of the times, that's a passing play. And the kicker, this has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. And he's got it. So the try for two successful. And with it, they're back within a field goal. Well, I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet, said go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call. And he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion. And now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves. Touchdown, here's Cyber now to kick it off. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. The Bengals offense now, they head back onto the field. Their lead down to a field goal now as they start with a first and 10. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10 at their own 26. From the gun, he'll set up to throw. That's complete. Bernard. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. Not much there, only a yard. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal game. Here's second and nine. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. And that's complete. It's Green here. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. A.J. Green. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. And for the Browns, a nickel set here on third down. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. He completes it to Boyd. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. First and 10 at the 31-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow finding green complete. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Brings up second and a yard at the 22-yard line. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Got 
This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. And Burrow going to throw again. He's got his man, Boyd. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. First and ten. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. So from inside the 20, here's first and ten at the 18. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Well, I think that was good strategy there, trying to go right back to him after the last completion. But this time, the defense was all over it, and they got there to break that one up. A good action to this point in the third quarter. Just a three-point game, second and ten. Jet sweep, Boyd with it. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. From the gun on third down is Burrow. The Browns' D locked in on third down, brings up fourth. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. So on fourth down, Burrow will give way to Randy Bullock for the Bengals' field goal. 29-yard attempt. Bullock's kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So a dozen plays on that drive, CD, but in the end, it yields just the three points. Well, they were able to keep the defense on the field for a long time, but let's be honest about it. That was about as unsatisfying a drive as you're going to get. 12 plays and you only get three points out of it. Not quite the ending they were looking for. After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there. Call it the 26. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Three yards the gain there, second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Mayfield hands to Chubb on the draw. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 12 yards there and a first down. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. They run again on first down, Chubb. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Gino Atkins. No gain on the play there. Second down. One of the best around. Big Geno Atkins there on the stop. An eight-time Pro Bowl, including each of the last six seasons. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. Working out of the gun. Mayfield. That's caught over the middle. Hooper. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 
11 yards there, first down. I like how they worked the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not even going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Now Chubb. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Only a yard on the game there as time will run out on this third quarter of play. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Mayfield down. It's caught, back up. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 27-yard line. A gain there of 21 yards. I'll tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing. Gets this to Kareem Hunt, his running back. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. Here's Mayfield. That's complete right around the 8. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Working with second and five now. Going to the air again with Mayfield. And he's got his tight end. It's Hooper for the Browns touchdown. A five-yard touchdown catch. And the Browns are an extra point away from taking the lead in this game. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury. And it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. He finds himself open for an easy touchdown. And the condition's miserable for a kicker and a holder, but this one's good, and with it, they take the lead. Bengals, 17. Turn man, Wilson. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Cincinnati set to take over once again. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. Burrow going to lead up the Bengals here first and 10 at their own 26. He'll throw from the gun. Open man is Uzama. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Ten yards there on a Bengal first. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. 
From midfield now, Burrow gets it to his running back, Bernard. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. The linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. To the air again, Burrow. That's caught by his tight end, Uzama. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. On first and 10, Joe Burrow. And his throw's going to be incomplete. He was looking for John Ross that time. But it'll be second down. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, yeah, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. John Ross, the one he was looking for. And that takes us from second to third down. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. Here's Kevin Huber now as he's on to punt for Cincinnati. And now a low liner. I think he mishit it. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. Now the Browns offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. From the 13, now they work on first and 10. First down, Mayfield, and finding the tight end, Hooper. A gain of six there on first. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for him there, didn't they? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They've got to go thank the guys on D. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. And he's got the hook up to Landry. And he gets it here to right around the 24 before he's out of bounds. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. On the ground, it's Chubb. It's Logan Wilson there to bring him down. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. They go play action. Mayfield. This pass complete to Higgins. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one good for 26 and a first down. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 47. On the carry, it's Chubb. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there, I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, 
you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And he gets it down to the 32. Seven yards there and a first down. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who, who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around campus, right? Maybe old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Yeah, that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pick up on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. Chubb. And a short gain here down to the 22. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, a pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. And he'll take this down for about four yards, down to the 15. They're on the tackle. Able to stay in bounds, and the clock keeps rolling. And this defense right now backed up in the red zone. Another touchdown, it's over. They've got to stand tall quickly. Been in this spot before. Now there's a little bit of desperation creeping in, and all you're doing when you're talking to your defensive teammates is first guy there, hold him up. Second, third guy in, rake it the football. Get it out. We've got to create a turnover because one more score, and this game's over. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in the second half. Instead, it's third down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got to lead. You've got to protect it. And he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? Flush to his right. Touchdown, Cleveland! Well, they were backed up on third and goal, and when you saw him starting to scramble, my thought process was he'll get what he can and maybe get out of bounds. But he got a little bit greedy there, and in this case, greed was good as he got into the end zone. Here's Cyber now to add the extra point. And with that, the lead is up to eight. He is good. Makes the score Browns 25, Bengals 17. the touchdown. Here's Seibert now to kick it off. Now it's Wilson. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. Still plenty of time here in the fourth quarter. Just a one possession game down eight. They'll be looking for the touchdown and two point conversion. A field goal here on this drive does very little at this stage. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10, just shy of the 30. He'll set up to throw from the gun. Green brings it in. 
five yards on the catch there brings up second down. First play of the drive in their hip pocket. Of course, the focus here has to be the touchdown of the two-point conversion. Field goals are going to help you. Yeah, but how about that first play of the drive? Just to get them started, nice gain, got some positive momentum going. They're on their way, and they don't have to rush. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Miles Garrett picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Boy, he came in off the edge so quickly there. Look out, because that's exactly what it was being shouted by the offensive lineman to his quarterback because he had no chance to block him. That's where we are. Looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. They'll look to throw. He gets this one to Boyd. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Well, that's one way to convert on third down, picking up 26 yards. First down now, but that clock rolling. Back to throw. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. Giovanni Bernard, the intended receiver out of the backfield. And now it's second down. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. He's back to throw. That's complete, Bernard. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. On the screen, Bernard. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. They'll get 14 on that one. Good for a bangle first down. Pardon, you gotta like what they're doing right there. Little by little, they're getting closer. Another good pickup. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Now it's Burrow. Dance into his left. No one there to help out downfield, but no problem. Scrambling for 22 and a first. Well, there you go. Save your best scramble of the day for a big-time situation in the fourth quarter. Picking up the first. You don't want to use it up early, right? You want to make sure you save it for that exact moment, that key time. And that's what he did, although you and I both know it wasn't planned that way. But what a nice job using his eyes, scanning the field, and realizing when it was time to exit the pocket and go. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game. Second down and three, ball on the seven. Back to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Play number nine on the drive coming up, and they need nine yards on third down. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. And this is caught. He's got it for a touchdown. And now in the final seconds, it's all going to come down to a two-point conversion. We'll break down the touchdown later. It's two-point conversion time. Go to your script, pick your play, and go for it. And there's going to be a stoppage here. The booth wants to take another look at this potential touchdown. Look, that 
that's what the technology is for, and this touchdown will count. Listen to this crowd now. Their guys need a stop on this two-point conversion. Here we go with Burrow, and it's caught. And with it, we are tied here in the fourth. Everything was riding on that two-point conversion, and they got it. They got it. They now have the momentum. Time really dwindling in this game. Now their big deal is make sure they get a good kickoff and don't give up anything big on the defensive end. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. They have a little bit of time here to get into field goal range. Not much. In a tie game, you don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk-reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater. Run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now, the ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. Short gain there to start overtime. Almost a tester play, wasn't it? Wanted to see if the guys on defense were going to fit the gaps the correct way because we're in overtime. So it's not just physical tiredness out there, right? Mentally, are you still doing what you're supposed to do? And they're up to the task on that play. And certainly fatigue on both sides of the football. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. The first throw in overtime for Mayfield now. And he completes it to Hunt. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. The temptation to go for it probably there always is, especially in overtime. Got to punt it, though. I think you're right. I think that you absolutely have to punt it away and trust your defense, especially play a little field position here. But you're so right about the temptation. Another way to satisfy that, though, line up in punt formation and fake it. That's another way to get it done. So a change of possession here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Bengal offense now gets set to head back out onto the field. Their defense did its job, got the stop. All they need is three, and this is over. Couldn't have done much else other than score themselves and end it. 
but they turned it back over to him, and now all they need is a field goal to win the game. An excellent job by the defense. Can the offense finish things off? Part one is done, now part two. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game. Trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now. Hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Now time to see what Burrow can do here at OT. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. Eluding the pressure right. And he's going to be taken down here, still a couple yards short of the first. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. That's a good effort there, trying to do it on his own. But as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you. And if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Browns will take over first and 10. The Browns offense trotting back onto the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? <laughs> you look at what you called before and realize it hasn't worked go to so something well. Else. And maybe you try and find one. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. Carl Lawson with a little how do you do as he gets in there for the sack. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Still 15 yards to go, second down. Play action now, here's Mayfield. And he's got his man on the crossing route, that's Landry. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A gain of 28 yards there and give him a first down. That crossing route is so effective when you hit it just right because you get a guy on the move, and then we see the end result there. It's a nightmare for the defense. They got a guy with a full head of steam. Not only does he catch it, but he picks up additional yardage after it. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. They'll come up on a second and four now from the 40-yard line. Mayfield looks to throw. He'll let it go deep for Beckham. This is caught inside the 15. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. A game there of 30 big ones. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. So everything rests now on the right foot of Austin Seibert. A 27 yard attempt. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. Well, we thought this game would be a good one. It did not disappoint into overtime, and it took the field goal to win it. And we always pay lip service to how important it is to play defense. And usually we focus on the big offensive pyrotechnics, right? But in this case, they got the ball back on defense, 
gave themselves a chance, and they capitalized on it with a victory. And I don't care what distance that field goes from in overtime. The knees are always knocking, <laughs> but he pushed it through. Not only that, think about your snapper, your holder. A lot of nerves for them, too, because they have to do their job in order to give him one last chance to put a foot to it. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL.